feels like a while since I've made a video, but that's because I pre-recorded a couple of the other ones, the last two. I posted them, I was traveling again, and then uh, now I'm back. I was in California, um, working, filming um, a bit about the water crisis, like the intense snowpack, the melt, Lake Tulare, all of that. Uh, it's very cool. Dream job. More of that, please. By the way, I will just point out that last year, at the end of the year, I made a vision board and it's literally coming true. Every single piece of it. So we are somewhere here. And now I guess it's like the next half of the year, starting with July, right? We still have June. But yeah, well, you know, time. I st start every video with remarking on how fast time is flying because I do feel that it is going very fast. We're starting the month of June now, this week, and leading up to the full moon in Sagittarius. Sagittarius is the ninth house um, ruler adventure, philosophy, wisdom, greater purpose. Um, and if that feels very in alignment with me, absolutely. Uh, you already know I pull one card for each month from the Illuminated Love Oracle deck. It looks like this. It's an amazing deck. I got it in Portland. Um, I don't think the makers are from Portland, but in any case, that's where I got it. Let me read you this month's theme. Um, welcome home. I just had it. There it is. This is an attunement card. This oracle attunes you to an inherent state of being so essential that in your searching, you may have overlooked it has been here all along. In attempts to hold on to past experiences or control future unfoldings, one may overlook the magic of home residing in the ever-present now. As you surrender the incessant search and soften to receive your own magnificence, the God self in one and all is revealed. Then you are eternally home in the essential embrace of your inherent nature. Be gentle. The conditioning of the past and future are deeply ingrained. When the unconscious trance of time arises, Allow the awareness of this to be the miracle that reveals the present moment. And with a kind and loving embrace, welcome yourself home once more. The illuminated practice. Let's do it together. It's to be very quick. With a deep inhale and exhale. Access the stillness that lies ever present within you. Rest in this stillness as you attune to the loving embrace of this blessed moment. Welcome home. Yes, time has been a big theme as of late. Uh, welcome home as in like your inherent nature. We already know, we've, I've talked about this a lot. Themes this year have a lot, been a lot of self-discovery and new senses. The world is opening to you now. Recognize yourself in a spiritual dimension with capacities far greater than what you, than what you could imagine before. Be in wonder and awe with yourself and all. You have finally arrived. Welcome home. Yeah, no, that makes perfect sense to me. Listen to what's going on here. Last week um, was a very interesting week. Um, energetically. Remember there was an inciting incident. There was like some sexy aura stuff going on, but really I think it's almost this, this feeling of, um, it's kind of playful and it's intense, but we're sort of like playing with what life is and what life could be like. And so we're growing um, within our own capacities and within the context of us and others, our partnerships, our work, our play, just all of it. And in that, we're coming more into ourselves the further that we, that we go along. 
we ended last week with a release of expectations, and this is important because the sun is also square Saturn. It's almost like we want what we want. We're, we're, we're growing, we're doing things, but we're also somehow making it harder than it needs to be. Mm, I think that um, this is ultimately a test. Uh, this is a test of how badly do you want something? And I think we this came up a couple weeks ago too. I mean, I'm doing this energy weekly energy because again, I say it a lot. This is a saga, <laughs> the great drama of the stars. And I kind of like to follow along. So this is where I'm getting. Okay, um, Moon is trying Pluto midweek as the Moon is also in Scorpio. Intensity. Um, I would call this growing pains. We're in the mutable waters of Sagittarius this week, um, as well as Virgo, which was where the moon was in the first quarter, which was sort of like this weekend, this past weekend. Really, the astrology is asking us to overcome our insecurities. Um, this is a time of controversy, becoming controversial. At least we think we're controversial. Um, when anytime we're dealing with Lilith, which is where this is what I'm looking at now, Mercury square Lilith, Lilith is the energy of like rejection or being suppressed. And so even though it may be accepted, you know, the, the feeling I get is like, go where you're wanted, go where you're valued. Don't stick around where you're not wanted or valued. Because those are the areas and the places where that Lilith energy will be very strong and you will feel suppressed and repressed and that intensity inside will build up. We, the, the, we are being guided to move to a place where the way we want to interact with life, just imagine every kind of person you can imagine exists on this world does, every kind of situation. What is it that you're manifesting for yourself in your mind? And then go be in that community. Go help people um, like you. You know, I want to also leave a note here that's just like, don't just help others that are exactly like you. I mean, um, partnership with common interests. People who you know will support you and that you can support to go the distance. That is a big highlight of this uh, month as well. It's not quite happening this week, it'll be next week, but Venus is entering Leo, and then in July, Venus is retrograde. Venus, planet of love, beauty, and Leo. Leo likes to be sort of on their own. They're kind of like, got a bit of an ego, better than everyone else. So we're gonna find ourselves, and we're going to manifest the perfect partnerships, the perfect people, the perfect business partners um, around us. Once we address our own uh, repressed things, right, bringing things to light, welcoming yourself home, all parts of yourself. So I sort of went ahead into the future, now I'm gonna come back. Venus, try Neptune, this is great for artists. If you're an artist, um, or not. Inspiration, faith, creativity, love, compassion, romance. I think love is ultimately the energy that we can use and channel for uh, any, any time that we're stuck, any time we feel insecure, any time we feel fear or doubt, you can invite love in to bring you past that, um, that boundary, that limiting belief. And yeah, this is all working up to the full moon in Sagittarius. Like I said before, at the same time, Mercury is conjunct Uranus. Sagittarius is about like searching for life purpose or, you know, my brother's a Sag. He's, and he's visiting actually right now. It's been a very busy time. And I've never seen him be more Sag like before ever. Or maybe I just didn't see it before. Maybe it's because I'm studying now. When I had to tell him like, Hey, does everything have to be so deep? Because me right now, I want more play. I want more fun. I'm done being a Capricorn. 
I mean, I'm not, I'm great at that. Um, but I can be a Capricorn and be playful. And this is what I was trying to tell my Sag brother is like, let's keep it light, bro. Let's keep it light, especially with that Venus moving into Leo and then retrograding. This is not a time to be taking yourself too seriously. Um, but I don't want to tell you what to do. I'm just sort of, now I might be projecting a little bit. Do you? I'm just here to report on what's going on here on this page. We are tuning into our mission or a greater philosophy on life. And we are focused on the future. This is really great energy for independence. Like I was saying, our partnerships, our relationships are undoubtedly challenged, not just this week, but in the weeks coming, the months coming, all throughout Venus retrograde, and quite frankly, <laughs> probably throughout the end of the year, or maybe just most of the summer. Um, if you feel this, holla. Let me know what's going on for you. I feel like it's been happening for me, like this shifting social circles has been happening for years. I am not surprised. I am not scared. <laughs> um, I just, I do. I, I think it does help me grow, to grow in faith in the universe. And it all begins through self-discovery. And it begins through, you know, for me, at least I'm a verbal processor, saying something out loud maybe for the first time. Acknowledging, hey, I want to travel more or hey, like I know that I'm like really good at this thing and even though my life is not organized in the way that would allow me to travel full time, I know that I can do it. And lo and behold, just more and more opportunities. Look, again, we have, sorry, bottom of the deck I had to point out. I'm going to change the setup again at some point. The bottom of the deck came to show itself the chariot card of the year I've said it many times this is the card of evolution graduation you know personal revolution evolution and personal revolution growth number seven spiritual sevens are also a choice choice card you can't be in both places at the same time you have to be one place or another so in that sense, we have uh, committed energy, commitment energy. The lovers showing up, also a choice card, although it is a number six. Yep, yep, yep. Let's get a reading in. High Priestess reverse, Judgment reverse. Three of Swords reverse. Okay, well, I mean, that's good. The Magician, Four of Pentacles, Five of Cups, The World, The End, <laughs> Nine of Wands, sorry about that, and the Sun in reverse. And the Eight, oh, Double Eight. Double Eight, um, and the cards underneath. This is sort of like thematic, limiting beliefs about work. Okay, limiting beliefs about work. Higher font and also another eight. This um, eight of wands, eight of swords, eight of wands, eight of pentacles, and the higher font in reverse. This is about feeling stagnant in work in some capacity. Um, higher font. I might be speaking to a Taurus. This is about. I mean, this reminds me of the Mercury aspects of this week where we may be feeling a bit intense about something that's coming up for us and it is our duty, right, Mercury and Lilith. It's our duty to say something when something isn't working. Try it, don't dwell, don't dwell in it, but I'm a huge fan of saying things out loud even if nobody's listening. I'll say it to myself and then I will see how my body feels after I've like let that go. What are your limiting beliefs? Say it out loud. See how it sounds. 
because what I see here is that someone is not really connected to their intuition all that much. Someone is not aware um, of what the, what limiting beliefs, what stagnation is here. Like there's an energy here, an old energy that is, yes, testing you. We are being tested. But what you're not actually seeing about yourself is that how this is contributing to your growth and your strength. Because we have the Three of Swords in reverse. This is about old wounds uh, manifesting as strength. And, and this is the energy of bravery needing to come in so that we can move on. We have the Magician, the Four of Pentacles, and the Five of Cups. If you do what you all, if you do what you've done, you'll get what you always got. It's time to do something differently. Um, I say here, looking at the magician, and he's got all four of the um, elements on his table. Really, what we are missing in this, um, <laughs> I was gonna say, a salad. We have a salad of eights over here. Do we have any more eights? No. But um, so yeah, the, the Eight of Pentacles, Eight of Swords, Eight of Wands, we're missing the Eight of Cups. The Eight of Cups is about moving on. It's time to move on. Go do something different. Go travel. Go move yourself physically or emotionally or spiritually. So you're not tapping into that. You're not really... The High Priestess is also the moon, so I associate her with the water energy as well. And that's why we have the Five of Cups, because we're trying to build wealth. You know, this, this four in the center is, is about security. Um, we did recently come out of Taurus season. We want to feel secure, and we want to feel stable. The, the full moon in Sag, where it's at, means that we, will, we can tap into stability and security on this full moon by reviewing the last six months how have your ideas your personal growth even like you know things actual things that have happened physical things in your life where did you find purpose where did you feel you you found purpose where did what did you learn um about yourself about the world and root yourself into those things to feel secure and stable this week and you know for as long as you feel that it works for you. If you're only looking at success through the lens of physical and energetic, like, am I inspired? Am I, are my ideas flowing? Am I productive every day? I feel like that's going to be, there, may, there will be days where you feel disappointment or even grief. You may feel like I'm not doing enough or I'm, I'm, I'm having challenges, so I'm not successful. But not every day is supposed to be, not, you know, we're not supposed to not have challenges, I think is the lesson of this week. This is growing pains. We're growing, and we're in pain. <laughs> the world is here. We're moving towards a point of no return. Once we learn this lesson, Nine of, nine of Wands, also, you know, Mercury and Uranus transit at the same time as the full moon, the energy of independence. The Nine of Wands is like a, a personal lesson. This is about only you can move through this gate. Only you can walk through that, the, um, you know, like walk through that lesson. You don't take other people with you on your own journeys. This is something only you can do. But this is... Uh, we have also the fixed signs here represented on the world. Um, so, by the way, Taurus, Leo, Aquarius. Who am I missing? The water signs again. Scorpio. Scorpio. The moon is in Scorpio this week, midweek. And the sun in reverse. I think there's great medicine in joy and in happiness and and in just simple pleasure if you're truly feeling challenged 
see what you can do to invite more joy and pleasure into your life at this time. It's going to help you not only overcome this feeling that you're any, any feelings of doubt, but in the stillness, in the quietness is where we get a lot of insight and information. So, um, It's not, it's not so much found in the material things. I was just having this thought earlier. I guess if I'm going to make a metaphor, it's that um, I'm a filmmaker and a photographer. Better gear doesn't make you better, a better photographer. Having the most expensive camera or the most expensive lens doesn't make you more creative. It's actually the opposite. It's when we're limited. It's when we're challenged. It's when we have to... Um, flex our problem-solving capacities is when our true authenticity, our uniqueness, what, what we really embody in life, what we're here to do, shines through. And that's what I think wants to come through. It's saying, hey, don't overthink it. Just be more like yourself. Be more like yourself. And yeah, the eight of, eight of Cups is what's missing here out of this eight, eight, eight. Eight is the higher vibration of five, if I'm getting that correctly. And it is a, another personal transformative number. So things are changing. I don't know about you, but I've been having mad synchronicities for weeks. And I was very thankful to the angels for sending me those because I needed them. I feel like the energy of this, what's showing up here, was like me two weeks ago. Um, and yeah, and then I had that job in California and, I, and it was the perfect thing to get my mind off of the thing I wasn't doing or the thing I was not able to do, whatever stuckness, and now I'm on the other side. So what is it that you can do? It, it doesn't have, it doesn't, it, the, the path of material is not the way. That's all I'm going to say about that here. So whether it's joy, passion, um, whatever gets you more into your feeling. Um, and again, the full moon in Sag is suggesting we look at our philosophies on life. We look at also um, what gives us a sense of adventure. I mean, it could be a trip, booking a trip, a vacation. It could also be just picking up a new book. There's so many different ways, or taking a class. There's so many different ways. So um, yeah, find something that resonates with you in that. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna let this go, okay? Whew. This was a fun one. Thanks for being here. Um, appreciate you so much. I'll see you next week uh, after the full moon. Good luck.